Hello and welcome to the next Parrot Review Summary of Battlefleet Gothic Armada. This is a game by Tindalos Interactive and published by Focus Home Interactive, uh, champions of reasonably decent games just with a few rough edges. And this is pretty much the case with this game. And this has probably been one of the most troubling review titles I've had all week. Um, well, all time really. I mean, it doesn't quite come close to a Raven's Cry because um, that game was horrendously broken. But this does sort of come very close and it's just not been a pleasant experience overall and so far I've every single evening I've been playing it I've been forcing myself to play for more than an hour because at every turn for playing this game for more than an hour I've just gotten really agitated and angry and to be honest if you're playing a game that makes you angry you probably shouldn't be playing it but for the sake of reviewing it I've, I've just had to carry on and multiple times I found myself literally having to force to take myself just take a step back and play something else, just sort of knock around with some Magic the Gathering, jump into Heroes of the Storm, just to chill down, basically. Um, because, I don't know, man, this game, like, it has issues. Uh, I mean, th there are some interesting stuff. I'll start off with some of the positives, because phew, I need to start somewhere. Um, and, you know, this this is like a it's like an RTS, but it's got a little bit of turn-based stuff in there. It's got a few RPG elements, and it's got all sorts of little, like, neat little systems um, that have been implemented in rather peculiar ways and rather pointless ways, pretty much. Um, to start with, I mean, the story, the, the story is reasonably decent. I like the way that it carries on, and in this game, you don't get to restart missions if you're failing miserably, which I discovered quite early on. Um, because it's sort of, if you fail a mission, it it affects the storyline and how things progress and how your sort of full campaign progresses. Um, a lot of it's persistent, which is quite nice. Um, it's a really interesting idea, a great way of doing things, and it does sort of follow a very similar campaign style to uh, the original Dawn of War games where you would sort of have a map and you'd have to take over various things, except when you lose sectors or things like that, you, you do get sort of long-term negative effects, um, like when the chaos grab hold of an artifact, then you get problems with the amount of currency it costs to repair ships and they take twice as long uh, stuff like that. it's really quite cool it's interesting um and i like the way that they've implemented that and you know being unreal engine 4 um it looks absolutely fantastic i mean when i switched between 4k and 1080p i did see a genuine visual difference i mean it didn't increase the memory usage that much um, just a small amount but it did look better and i thought you know this is the first game i've played in quite some time where the 4k sort of visuals do actually look like 4k visuals and it looks fantastic obviously it didn't perform fantastically because there was no multi gpu profile uh, but you can check that out in the full performance analysis which should be in the link below um but it, it looked nice and that's all the good thing i have to say about this game which is man it's, it's been it's been a roller coaster of a week um, the game randomly, like, I know this is probably more of a performance oriented thing, but there is there is a VSync option in the videos menu, which is an average videos options menu, uh, except the videos option menu seems to have a few bugs, uh, which is bizarre. And that VSync tick box or whatever, I unticked it and I thought, oh, fantastic. Quickly checked in the menus, um, menus went above 60 FPS or whatever. Great, I thought. Fantastic. This will make my FPS. Uh, figures not look completely stupid like a lot of games that have hidden FPS caps uh, except when you get into the game it is capped at 63 FPS for some reason now I have no idea what was causing this and I don't know whether this is an experience other people have had as well but I checked like my AMD drivers I checked any sort of software I was running to make sure I wasn't capping it I checked various game settings and I just could not find an FPS cap and why the game capped itself at 63, I don't know, because it wasn't fully utilizing my GPU um, on 1080p at 63 FPS. It was just, it was bizarre. And another thing with the video options menu is that if you're on a 4K screen like me, which I know a lot of people aren't, um, if you switch to 1080p, it sort of rescales everything, fine, whatever, you get that little black screen. But if you go to change it back to 4K, the 4K like button is hidden at the bottom, and you have to change it to 3200 by whatever it is, that weird resolution and then apply that and then change it to 4k so it's just like that's the f minor bugs like in this game because they're not far far more and um, the ai is absolutely just dumbfounding in both yours and the enemy ai um if you sat back and just sent your ships away to the enemy ai and they just came towards you you would see some strange things i remember in one particular match i positioned one of my very long range sort of lance cannon carriers uh, directly behind this nice little minefield 
and the enemy sent a probe, so he saw my ship and he saw the minefield, and then proceeded to drive just at full speed into the minefield, exploded and died. Um, and, you know, that's just... That's a small thing that the AI does, which is absolutely insane. Um, there are multiple glitches in this game which will cause you to both win and lose, wrongly. Um, a lot of the games I did fail because A, I was crap, but B, I wouldn't actually fail them in some instances. Like, I remember one of the missions was, do not let this ship escape, destroy the ship. And so, I destroyed the ship. But then it played a script of the ship escaping despite being exploded into various pieces escaping through a wormhole, and I failed. And this happened on multiple occasions, like a lot of occasions where it would kick in this script where I would lose even though I'd completed the objective. But then conversely, I would be doing something or other. I think it was the same thing, actually. You had to stop a ship from escaping. Um, and I failed at stopping the ship from escaping. But then it played the destruction animation, even though the ship had a shitload of health left, and said I was victorious. And I'm like, this is game breaking. Like, how can you not find this kind of bug in quality testing or quality assurance or whatever? And, you know, the game is just full, full of this crazy stuff that happens where stupid things happen that just shouldn't. And it happens far too often for me to just go, oh, it's just the occasional bug. No worries. It happens all the damn time. I lost a good 40% of my campaigns because of this weird stuff happening. Uh, the other thing is the movement. My God, this game is slow. So slow. Like, I know I'm I'm a relatively sort of more on the casual spectrum when it comes to games. I quite like sort of simplistic games, but done well. Uh, but this is, like, seriously so. Even the small ships are incredibly slow. And moving from one area to another is just so arduous and annoying. And a lot of the objectives in the game require you to get places pretty fast. Like in some of them, you've got to do an artillery strike, which you can't do with a support ship, which is some of your fastest ships. So you have to send one of your bigger ships. But, you know, the countdown timer for getting to one of those areas might be a minute and a half. But it takes your ship a good three minutes to reach those areas. So you fail purely because the movement system in the game is so friggin' slow. Like, immensely slow, boringly slow. And, you know, another aspect was when... You've got that automatic deployment at the start of missions uh, where you can auto-deploy, you can select where you dump your ships at the start. And on two occasions, I used the auto-deploy system and it really screwed me over, like, heavily. Which is kind of annoying because the game is supposed to know more than I do about what's going on in a mission. And one of them was... The game neglected to tell me that asteroids destroyed your ships um, in the tutorial. I think it vaguely said, oh, avoid asteroids, blah, 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 blah. So I used the auto-deploy, and it auto-deployed two of my support ships, the tiny ships, into an asteroid field, and then as soon as I moved them, they exploded. And then in the second instance, you have to escort this VIP ship or whatever through these various levels. And this VIP ship started up, like, up here, and then my ships auto-deployed way down here. And then I started the mission, and I thought, oh, you know, that seems odd for it to put me so far away. Maybe it knows something that I don't. Um, anyway, the VIP ship went in the opposite direction, um, the enemies came from the opposite direction, and when I tried to get my ships to that direction, they moved so slowly I never managed to get there, um, and, you know, just all bad things happened, and by the, by the time I actually made it to the VIP, who was already dead. So this auto-deploy system is either really stupid, or just, I don't understand how it works things out, because it works in... I don't get it, like... There's no point in using it because it will cripple your chances of being victorious. Um, so yeah, even if you are just going to dump all your ships in one area, do it manually for Christ's sake. I mean, don't use any of the systems that you're putting your trust in. Uh, the other thing is this game, the slow movement thing, is a, this is a strategy title, okay? And slow movement is kind of kind of hampers the whole strategy out of the whole game. Now, I know this is going to be different in multiplayer because you will be able to play the different races who are slightly faster or whatever, uh, particularly the Eldar. But um, it doesn't feel particularly strategic because what I'd do at the start of the game was, you know, I'd set out um, how far my ships would fire um, before they, you know, engaged an, an enemy, so further or closer, so that I got some bonuses to armor penetration and things like that. Um, I'd set which, uh, sort of whether they'd use broadsides or go head on. I'd then select which um, enemy AI they should prioritize, which um, parts of the ship they should prioritize. Um, and I'd send them in and I'd do some of this crazy strategy stuff and I'd move some of my damaged ships out of the way and then bring them back in after repairing and I'd be using all these skills all the time. And it didn't really achieve a whole lot. 
and I tested this because I, I did this relatively simple. It was a cruiser clash, which is just 4v4 cruisers, whatever. Nice and easy, simple. And I did all this crazy stuff, was using advanced maneuvers to get torpedoes in the right places and like absolutely hammering the ships. And I thought half of this stuff was done really slowly and I lost a hell of a lot of units and didn't really achieve a whole lot. I still was victorious. And I thought, you know, I'm going to restart this whole campaign, get to the same point and try again. So I did. And I just selected all my ships again, told them how far to attack and which broadsides to use or whatever before the game started. And I just right clicked and told them go there and attack. And exactly the same thing happened. Lost a few ships, but was still victorious, which is kind of not how it's supposed to work in a strategy title. And it's just, I found this the whole way through the game. Like you're up against the odds in a lot of missions. Like it's very difficult to be victorious, particularly on some of the harder modes. Um, and strategy just doesn't help. Um, or at least I didn't find it helped. And whenever I tried to employ some kind of advanced strategy, I don't know, maybe I was just playing it wrong. Um, I find it difficult to believe that you could play a game wrong after it's sort of taught you how to do things for a good few hours. And I was getting this impression like very, very late on in the game. And strategy seems relatively pointless. And the other thing is the upgrade system is, you know, your, your crew will um, level up and when the ship levels up, you can put like one additional skill point in one of your crew slots. And they give you really minor passive bonuses to things. To be honest, I didn't care about. Like I, if you put like in a point in your commander or whatever the hell he's called, commissar, I think, and then the chances of the ship um, defecting when it gets below 30% health will be reduced. Um, but it reduces it by one and a half percent, which, you know, I'm, it happened. I think a ship did a mutiny like twice in the entire game, and I just didn't bother with the commissar upgrades. Um, the only useful upgrades I found, to be honest, were the master gunners. Um, the rest of them just seemed pointless, like reducing cooldown time on skills was okay, but some of the sort of main skills takes th three minutes, 180 seconds uh, to regen. So... You know, the upgrade system just seems a little bit irrelevant and pointless. And it also seems slightly broken because some of the, um, like, the ship upgrades you can do that are, like, doing skill points and things like this, um, you can, like, add special things like uh, add skills or add passive bonuses to a ship. And there's quite quite a large number. And some of them are relatively interesting. Like, you can increase the range of your uh, lance cannons, which is great for long-range ships, or you can reduce the amount of um, armor that is sort of taken into account when you fire if you get a certain upgrade and attack within a certain range and it some of them are relatively interesting but others are absolutely ridiculous and strange in that one of my top end battle cruisers or whatever it was that fires uh, little squadrons of ships i could upgrade the hull on the armor the, no the hull on the shield sorry for like 50 or 100 um, renown which is the in-game currency whereas if i wanted to upgrade the hull and the shield on one of my light support ships which are just cannon fodder it was going to cost like 200 renown and i was like how the hell does that work out and it's just there's there's so many things in this game that just don't make sense and the, the, the gameplay like yeah it's a strategy game but you don't really need to employ a whole lot of strategy to do anything um, and when you do, your strategy can go just terrifically wrong and you'll end up losing uh, because of some poorly scripted event that's just gone completely wrong. The control system doesn't work. It's wrong in the tutorial, um, the tooltips that it gives you. It's like, oh, yeah, use W, A, S, and D to control the camera. No, that doesn't work. S and D control the camera. They go down and right. But A and W don't go up and left. No, in fact, they change your, um, your advanced maneuver, whatever the hell it is. So that's wrong. Um, I found myself accidentally pressing the buttons for some of the skills, which I somehow couldn't manage to find any like shortcut buttons for. I was kind of hoping for a MOBA-ish skill style system that made sense. Like you look at it and you go, yeah, my hand fits in that sort of range of eight buttons nicely that would make sense you know to have all those skills bound to those keys but no it's just all over the place and i end up using the arrow keys to control the camera and when you use a skill your camera keys stop working uh, for some reason i don't like the control system is just broken the gameplay is boring as all hell because it's so slow and strategy just does doesn't do anything and you end up failing missions even though you complete the objectives like i don't i don't understand this game it's just like it's been one of the most painful experiences of reviewing in the last two years. Um, granted, it's not as terrible a game as some of the games I have reviewed, but pretty damn bad. And when I look at the Steam reviews and see it's mostly positive, like, I'm a big Warhammer fan. Like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say I can sometimes be quite biased towards Warhammer 40k IP um, because I love it. I love Dawn of War. I love the whole thing. It's just a fantastic, like, system behind it all. 
But man, no bias is going to protect this game from just how terrible it is. Like, I heartily cannot recommend this game to anyone. I mean, if you're into strategy, go ahead and play Total Annihilation or Supreme Commander or just any other strategy title because this this is just not it. And there's multiple performance issues as well. And it's just, my God. It's like they did no quality assurance whatsoever. So, yeah, I'm not recommending this game. Not a chance. Um, I was initially quite excited about this and I've been banging on about it for ages and I had access to the multiplayer beta which to be honest I didn't find that amazing um, and I was a little bit concerned but I thought you know I'll wait until the full release everything will be better things will be fixed but nope no they are not this is just as bad as I thought it was in multiplayer um, and yeah like I don't know maybe you guys will have a different uh, experience to me maybe I just got really unlucky with some of the bugs and glitches um, happening repeatedly and incessantly um, but it's just, man, nothing makes sense in this game. Nothing at all. It just seems like a an inherently broken game that's got issues all over the place, has systems that are interesting but don't actually affect gameplay all that much. Nothing, nothing you do makes you think, oh, yeah, I did this and, you know, what I did was the reason I won. To be honest, I get the impression that, like, if you just left the AI to do it, it would probably do just as good a job as you as if you were doing advanced maneuvers and all this crazy stuff by just plowing into enemies. So, not a fantastic week, to be perfectly honest. I know this was supposed to be a Battle Souls review, but keys do up delayed, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to finally jump into this game because I really was quite interested in it, but now I'm just quite severely disappointed. So, I would say I hope you guys enjoyed this review, but to be honest, I wouldn't. Uh, you can see the full review, um, written review, and the performance analysis in the link below. And uh, we can only hope that our review of Fragmented next week will perhaps be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, perhaps, um, because there is no way in hell I'm touching this game ever again. Like, no. Nope.